is the fifth group um, called Climathenics. They're made up of two CSC alumni from Sub-Saharan Africa, representing Tanzania and Nigeria. The presenter will be Babatunde Osho, and answering questions will have Irene Ndebusha. Um, so without further ado, over to you, Babatunde. Thank you very much for the introduction, Catherine. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the challenge we are addressing through our policy proposal today, we focus on climate change awareness gap in Sub-Saharan Africa. And shortly, I will tell you why this is important. On your screen, at the, on the right hand side, is the outcome of a survey conducted by Gallup seeking to investigate how much people know about climate change. From this, we see that climate change awareness in Sub Saharan Africa is the lowest at 44% of the population. And out of this 44%, 56% do not consider climate change as a serious threat, as shown on the bottom panel. So going by today's population estimate of about 1.136 billion people in Sub Saharan Africa, can say that only less than 200 million people distributed across the 46 sub-Saharan African countries who are climate change aware consider it as a threat. So we observe there is a correlation between this lack of awareness and the majority of African government's climate change inaction. And uh, as they know that they consider climate change not being a top development priority like public health, security, and poverty. So, and this has further led to a severe lack of information that quantifies the socioeconomic implications of climate change and also inadequate institutional capacity to tackle it. Awareness is a greatest agent of change. So lack of climate change awareness is in SSA is a challenge we need to address to ensure the effectiveness of mitigation and adaptation policies. Next slide, please. So how do we address this challenge? We propose the use of mass media, specifically television and radio, to scale climate change awareness and educate the populace. Based on a review of different academic texts and policy documents, TV and radio is an instrumental tool to the development of perceptions and lifestyle. This is grounded in psychological effects of repetition and um, visual appeal. Um, climate change awareness and behavioral change in this context through high frequency, top of the mind, and non-intrusive audio and video content translated into different languages to reach a wider audience. Specifically, we are talking about content of less than a minute in duration that can be introduced in between broadcasts. So we will be targeting high-risk population in terms of climate variability comprising of young people, dwellers along coastal areas, and indigenous people among others. Understandably, SSA has a young population. So while we will be reducing climate change vulnerability over the long term by targeting young people, we can achieve results in the short term by also targeting adults up to the age of 75. This is premised on the, on the fact that majority of policymakers in SSA who are influential to decision making fall within this, this category. Click, please. It is interesting that there has been an uptrend in the number of TV households over SSC over the last eight years. This is coupled with the increasing pay TV subscription and rising number of community radio stations. So there is an opportunity here for us. Next slide, please. Through the mass media model, we are projecting an increase in climate change awareness in SSA by 10 to 15 percent over three to five years. This is expected to have a significant impact on climate change uh, threat perception in the region. And uh, secondly, through the increase of knowledge about climate change, we foresee a rise in adoption of sustainable lifestyles. For instance, organizations adopting sustainable packaging and individuals imbibing the culture of waste reduction, recycling, and reusing. Thirdly, by showing through media the overlap between climate change and socioeconomic prosperity, we foresee a rise in commitment and action towards the integration of climate change into development policies. We foresee a situation whereby we are moving from mere rhetorics to real political action. And lastly, we envisage a rise in foreign investment in the sustainability sector leading to job creation. Next slide, please. So to implement the mass media model policy model, uh, mass media policy model, a detailed action plan will be created following a rigorous review of the initial draft. This will be followed by partner and stakeholder engagement. Uh, we are collaborating with actors across different sectors to achieve ownership, sustainability, and um, technical and financial support. Uh, click, please. 
so uh, all these partners and so and the uh, and the stakeholders are distributed across different sectors, and they will be assisting to implement the the um, initiative. Subsequently, a six to twelve months one minute in remaining select, in selected countries will be carried out to ad identify potential shortcomings, which will be reviewed and addressed uh, prior to a launch. Finally, an effective monitoring and evaluation strategy will be developed to address delivery and um, impact of the project over time. So at this point, I would like to say thank you very much for listening on behalf of Clear Team uh, Climate Enix, and I await your questions. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Babatunde. Um, over to you, judges. Um, yeah, David, if you'd like to ask a question. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Babatunde, for this presentation. It was very clear. And um, I, I see the approach that you're taking. And my, 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 my contribution is more of a comment rather than a question. Um, given the current trends, and my work takes me to Africa quite frequently, especially before the pandemic, wouldn't you consider social media as opposed to traditional mass media as an excellent conduit, given that the large percent of the persons that you're trying to reach are young people and the rate of growth of um, mobile phone usage and um, app usage is probably greater than the rate of growth of access to televisions? Is that something that you, you considered or you think that may be feasible? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, okay, so in terms of social media, um, usage, we understand that most young people are on social media these days, and uh, there is a large, when you look at the trend, talking about acquisition of mobile phones in sub-Saharan Africa, it's trending up. But um, we need to also look at the fact that we are looking to target or carry along people that are in the uh, rural areas who might not have access to uh, mobile, to internet-enabled mobile phones. And again, in sub-Saharan Africa, from data, we see that um, data is still costly in most countries in sub-Saharan Africa. When you compare that um, with the cost of um, having a radio, we see that the radio, having access to radio could help consider compared to internet access. So yes, social media is a very good option and um, it could help to, re to reach the younger population. But however, we need to also look at uh, how people in the rural areas who might not really have the financial mind to access data to connect to the internet and um, other um, issues such as uh, expensive mobile phones could also um, impact that. So thank you very much. Thanks, answer. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, um, Babatunde, and to Dr. Bano for your question there. Any further questions, as ever, do pop them in the chat and the team will be on the call to be able to answer those.